Hello everybody, this is Grandpa. And Grandma. Today we're going to build another portal room. Highway in another. If you need to go to distant places in your world, this is the best way to do it. Easiest way to travel in the nether. So, without further ado, let's build this thing. First thing we need to do is get some obsidian. So we go down in our mine and find some lava that we can mine. This area around here looks pretty interesting, which is easiest to mine out. Put up some lights because when we change the lava into obsidian, it'll get dark. You change it into obsidian, you just pour some water onto it. It changes the water into obsidian. And the safest way to mine it, put some water down. Because as you dig, you may open up lava pockets, and that'll protect you from those and protect your obsidian from getting destroyed in the lava, which it would get destroyed. So when I'm mining for nether or obsidian, you put this water bucket down, and you mine in the water. You see, I'm breaking through the lava underneath here. It's creating more obsidian, and it's also keeping that lava from burning up and keeping me from burning up. So it's just a good safety precaution to put down water when you're doing this, because you don't know what's under here. It could be ground, it could be lava. In this case, it seems to be a deeper lava pool. This keeps you safe and keeps what you're mining safe. Otherwise, you'll lose a lot of it if this stuff falls in the water. It's also a good idea if you're mining diamonds, you're not sure what's under it. Once you get a sufficient amount of obsidian, then let's head to the portal. Meet Grandma in the storage room. We'll get the last supplies we need to head up to the portal to build this thing. Make sure you have some gold on. Make sure you got all the mining tools you need. You might want to get some blocks. These are all fully upgraded, so I'll save them. Take off anything important that you don't want to lose up in the nether. It's always a possibility up there. Once you're prepared, head over to your portal. Set my spawn at that bed, and then I'm going to go in the portal. One of the first things you need to do is get the exact coordinates of this portal. Pull up your F3 screen, write down the coordinates. 4167, 287. 4167. Then find a suitable place you can get up to the top of the nether. The wall over on one side seems to go up most of the way. It might be a good way to dig up. You want to get as close to the original portable as you can. There are times I've just gone straight up, pillared up, and built a tube around it. That's the easiest thing to do. With the wall being so close, I think we can just go over and dig up the wall here. If you are a little far away from it, it's not a big issue. Because once you get to the top, we'll dig over to it. This is a little further than I like, but it's still a good place to dig up. It'd be easier than just making a tube. So dig up until you can see the top of the nether. You'll know you're at the top when you can see some bedrock. 
Please be extremely careful anytime you're digging in another. You can open up a block of lava, which you'll have to retreat right away and put up a block. So have blocks handy in your like that in your quick slots. And you see I broke into a chamber up here. In this stage, the best thing to do is just change direction since we have to change direction to get back over to where the original base was anyway. Keep zigzagging to get around any obstructions, lava, caverns, anything you find. Like there, you got to be really careful. Everything looks the same. You can dig a hole and fall very quickly up here. So take it easy as you go. And just take your time till you get to the top. There's some bedrock. Once you see that, you know you're at the top of the nether. Decide what level you want to be at. I think 118 is a pretty good level. You're far enough from the top that you'll have plenty of room to maneuver, but you're over most of the obstructions you're running to. So start digging over to the coordinates that you marked for your portal. I'm going to open up an area directly on top of where the portal was below. I have the F3 screen up so I can see the coordinates I'm digging to so I know when I reach the point that I want to stop. you find the coordinate you want to be at, you want to drop a block there, different type of block so you can identify it again when you come back up. Because the next thing we need to do is go down and destroy the portal below. Now we have a reasonably safe hallway and stairway that we can go back down to the floor of the nether anytime we want. So we've got to go back down, follow the path we just carved out, which is a very long path. But it'll be very convenient to get back to the floor of the nether over here where we first came up. If we ever need to do that, which we will need to do that when we start mining for ancient debris. You just want to make sure the path is safe. Just keep it one block wide. There's Things can spawn in here. You may run into some zombie pigmen, things like that occasionally. So you'll want to block it eventually so things just don't wander up into your portal area. Once you get down here, you got to be careful again because this is a much more hostile place. I'm blocking that off so no pigmen walk up there. I'm going to put a couple lights down. Whoops. Didn't want to do that. I just wanted to put a light down. <laughs> and then we're going to go back over to our original portal base. What kinds of hostile things when you're in the normal part of the nether? That will bypass up above. You saw what happened when I hit a zombie pigman with an error an errant arrow.
Now we're being joined by Grandma. Someone's in the box. We're going to go out and build our portal room up above. First, I need to break the portal out down here. And rebuild it, it won't conflict with the one upstairs. Scumpus down? Sure, go ahead. What, the zombie piglins? They get in your way. That's that big hole. <laughs> I'm teasing you. Bobby. <laughs> there ain't no holes. That's where the nether portal is going to start. Should be right above the other one. We need to dig it out around here so that we can place all the blocks and build a portal. Write me, write down anything or look up anything? No. That's exactly where the other one was, just higher. Alright, so you got that figured out, huh? We both work to make the room bigger. This will be the main portal room we portal to when we come from our base down below. So we want to make it large enough we can house crafting bench, some storage boxes, whatever else we need up here. Occasionally we'll also oh, wow. trap a piglin that we can trade with. Makes it real convenient. right in here. Do what now? Oh wait, nothing can spawn right in here. Nope. Let me finish up the portal and light it up for the first time. Let's see if you did it right. Now we get a good fit see where it goes. Yeah, we're back here at the home base. Not where we wanted to be. Of course, it's dark. Yeah. Let's see if we go back where we belong. Yep, worked pretty good. And Grandma and myself have a discussion on where we're going to dig to next. 4118 285. Yes. Okay. So, which means we need to go which direction? 113. We don't have to go too far on the last number. Way this way, I think. But we need to go no. a little ways on the other number. 113, this, this way. This direction is the last number. So I'll take us to 113. Wait a minute. That's not right. That is. The, num the top number is going bigger. Yeah, it's at 113. You want to go to minus 140, 178, correct? No. I'm talking about the nether portal. 
So one thirty two minus seven one thirteen minus seventy two. Okay, I see. What's the matter? The lights on it. You can put, you can follow me with that stuff. Ain't very far. Oh. Where we determine these? Tell about the slabs. We, yeah. We take the location of the where we want to go below, divide it by eight, and tells us where to put the portal in the nether. I'll worry about the lights and the slabs. You worry about the rest. Another one is right where there's Enderman. We can get down to it easily. We will eventually make this into a nether road, a nice road. Which you'll see. Right now we're just digging the locations we need to be. Then when you get to the location, you turn and go to the other location you want to get to. Alright, I'm out of slabs. No, we're way too far anyway. Right here is 113. Right here is where we no. gotta go back to. Then you dig down the new hallway until you get to the location you need to be there. What you do on another portal, you, we build lanes off the north, south, east, and west. And then you branch, you go that far for your first coordinate, and then you branch off to go to the other coordinate, which is what we're doing here. Then you can build a room with another portal in it. Oh, there's an open area. These things are no fun. It's a small one. Too hateful. Eventually we'll have to make this three wide, but I'm not going to do that now. So all well, just another waste down there, which is really odd. To determine the location we're going to, when we were down at the snowy tundra, I took the coordinates of the portal that I built down there. Divide those by eight, and that's our coordinates we're digging to here. And you have to be careful whenever you dig that you don't dig a hole that you walk into. If I that would have been a hole right there, I could have fell all the way down, possibly to my death. That's how far the drop is. I have feather falling four, but I didn't, didn't bring those. I got my gold boots on. It has nothing. <laughs> That's why I brought a helmet. Those gas are. They're usually not that hard to kill, but I've had some problems with them over the last couple of trips up here. Well, the last couple of times, the, the zombie piglins get in your way, and then you hit them off while you're trying to get rid of the ghast. Mm -hmm. That's what killed me and Donna, my grandma. And we get to our location. I didn't 69. 70, 71, 72. Get there in a minute. We should be right over the portal. Get with something. Wood here I can mark it with. Your inventory always fills up with nether rack while you're digging in the nether. It's a real pain sometimes. A lot of times I'll make a hole and just bury it. Dead. 
down, hopefully. So it's safer Please. digging down in the nether. You dig why, up you... Why are you digging down in the nether? Because we need to get down to where that portal is. Break that portal. Oh. Here. There's basalt. We were right next to a basalt delta. So I'll turn here. I'm just trying to find an easy way down to the floor of the nether so I can break the portal that we had down there from the snowy tundra. The portal we're building in the nether highway above will conflict with the one down here on the floor, so we have to go down and break that one. I'm going through a basalt delta. There's some XP helping in my pickaxe a little bit. Won't get that much, there's not that much. Oh, guess what I found? Three. Well, I can't pick it up. I oh, <laughs> lava. Well, I've got the slabs all the way to where you started to go down. These blocks of lava are usually just single blocks. Wait, 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 don't mess. is good. I mean, that's going to go down to the ground from here. And it's the warp forest, exactly where we wanted to be. Looks like screen. Looked out. There's a portal right below me. Really? Yeah. Cool. I'm going to fill in this hole so I can get rid of some stuff. Watch the piglins. Bother me. Is that the piglins or the zombie piglins? Little baby piglin. to farm some Endermen. This is a very small one, but they do show up here. <laughs> Boy! I plan on leaving the steps here. Hi, piggy. Take this back upstairs. Okay, so this is forest nether portal. We'll write down the coordinates so you know where the where the other one has to go. Block is one twelve ninety eight minus seventy five to minus seventy two. One twelve ninety eight to minus seventy two to minus seventy five.
Built in the same place up there. Should take us right back down to the village below. Where there's already a portal which just broke because we broke this one. Should light back up. Now we go up above and build it in our new room we're building. But you're two pieces of another in this channel. Where? In the channel. Right there and right there? Yeah, that's fine. We'll see. Go ahead. Dark. Oh, that's a problem because I don't have a bed with me. There's a house right here. I swear I can't sleep. Spider or something. Oh, he took care of him. Who did? Gollum. His baby zombie. <laughs> you can come out. That's how you successfully build a portal run up in, from your portal room to where you want to go. And get the two portals linked up. Now we're going to fast forward time. Grandma's been busy at work fixing up the portal room, the portal runs, and we'll show you what she came up with. Grandma's been working real hard on the portal room. She's anxious to show it to you. So take us in there, Grandma. Looks a little different than you last saw. Explain what all you've done. Well, this is the uh, main base portal, and I try to make each room where the port, uh, where the uh, gate is, unique to where it's at. So this one is with sandstone, mud bricks, and jungle, and so this signifies that this is at the main base. Got slabs on the floor so it's non spawnable. Okay, you want to show us what did you do here? Well, what in order to make a, a fast trip between locations. What we do is we put in an ice highway, and basically there's slabs on the floor, and then what we do is we put glass on the sides, and we put ice with buttons on it down the middle. The buttons keep it from being spawnable, and this will make a trip go quickly from place to place. Why is the glass on the sides? So that when you put the 
when you go down the uh, middle, if the glass wasn't there, the boat would go from side to side and it would sashay back and forth and then you would have to control it better uh, or try to control it with the glass on it it keeps it straight and it doesn't move back and forth it just goes in a straight line yeah you want to take us down to how we get to the snowy tundra which we just finished okay. building in the video go ahead i'm gonna take i'm gonna watch you go i'm gonna take my boat See, once she gets on the ice, she speeds up. We put the netherrack down to slow you down. Like, here's a turn, so we got some netherrack. So that way you can turn and then take off and go down the next one. This is a lot longer track here. You saw us when we dug this out, just one wide. It's actually a pretty long tunnel. I cut through a lot of it, so you don't have to stand there watching us dig netherite constantly. It doesn't take very long at all to get through there in the boat. And then where does this take us? Now this takes us to the snowy tundra. Okay, you saw us have this room. It wasn't all designed. You don't have this one all set up yet for the tundra? No, because I haven't figured out how to make it uh, unique to this location. Well, you so, can use some snow usually blocks. Usually I try to find something that is uh, unique to the location. And unfortunately, all it is is snow and spruce. Some ice spikes over there. Well, you could use snow, you could use spruce. Decorate over here is a little igloo made out of blue ice. Not very colorful. They sort of got a green outfit on. We need to get some of these in our village. Hello. What are you standing there for? Oh, you're the toolsmith, huh? Hmm. We didn't do anything to make this village safe for them, so hopefully they stay alive. Uh, barely did anything. There's a couple of things we did, but very minimal. So that's how quick it is to get here, which over the overworld... We look at the coordinates. It's about 600 blocks in one way and four or 500 blocks the other way. It take you a while to get here just to walk to it. Here's a big hole there you can fall in. And we'll work on that not later. too far from here is where we get where we got the ice to put down in the uh, nether highway. We decorate it with different ways. We left an entrance here so we can get back down to the warp forest down there. And the fortress and all that's down there. So when we need to farm that, we can just come here and go plop down through there to get there. Don't have to walk all the way through the nether. We got another run. I haven't shown you the our new spider spawner yet. I guess we could show them. Well, I can still show them how to build it later. Let's go to the spider spawner. This run was a lot longer than the one to the spider spawner. Now up here on the sign, because it's easy to get lost in here, uh, I put a sign 
to indicate which direction to go because when you look at these walls you can get uh confused and so, turned around especially when you get 10 15 locations it's hard to figure out which one goes where it's nice to label them out these are nice safe passages nothing spawns in here we don't have to worry about anybody don't have to worry about getting killed for the most part Now this one was easy to decorate because this is all terracotta. Where are we going? To the Badlands. Okay. Hmm, we're inside the portal room. This was an abandoned portal that was in here. So we redid it and used it as the portal. There were some blocks missing. I put replace those. This way's out. I'll go show you where we're at. Badlands. Badlands is a good place to come to when you want spider spawners, things like that. And I don't have a bed on me. <laughs> we'll get back in. It's getting dark. Oops. We got a bed down here. We built this room up to here is the place where we can go out or we can come in through the portal. And down here is the spider spawner. You can hear them, they're all active already. We needed a string, so we built this. It's easy to find these poisonous spider spawners in the Badlands, so it's one of our favorite farms to build. Get you lots of string. We haven't used it very much yet, but it's also good for XP. It spawns lots of spiders. You need to light it up around here so a bunch of other things don't spawn, take up all the spawn cap. We haven't done that yet, but it still works really good. And I'll I'll bring out a video that shows you how we built this. They're pretty easy to make. You don't have to like the skelly spawner. We had to take them up in the air, 22 levels, and then drop them. You don't have to do any of that with these things. They wouldn't. Just drop anyway. They're spiders. They can climb up the walls if they want. So, we'll show you how we build it. Always good to have plenty of storage. The drops from the spiders go into here. We got hoppers behind there. And those slabs are sitting on top of the hoppers. Here comes some more. You can stand here and just AFK it just like you do the other one. Let them build up. You want your good sword, either Bane of Anthropods or this is a Sharpness 5 with looting, sweeping edge. Get you more drops. A sweeping edge kills, hits a lot more spiders. You do have to kill them because they don't take damage from falling like the skeletons do, so they're, they're, it's just the normal way to kill them. That's why you want a good sword. So, anything you want to tell them about it, Grandma? No, not really. This is the little room we made while we were making it. There's the water supply we used. The spawner's back in here. We left it all terracotta, because that's what this place is. Looks pretty nice. Terracotta kind of looks like painted walls. I think it's a good place to end the episode. It's Grandpa and Grandma. We'll be signing off. We'll see you later.